Let's take a look at how to remove all of the blank rows and blank columns in a data set. You can see from the data set on my screen, someone has decided to add blank columns and blank rows that maybe make it a little easier to read, say, when it's printed. So we're using blank rows to separate each quarter of information, and we're using some blank columns to separate categories of information. Now I've shaded the blank rows and blank columns blue just so they stand out. But I'm thinking in the real world, it would probably look something like this. But having the blue shade just really makes it obvious what the issue is. We could go through here and delete these blank rows and columns one at a time. But let's use Power Query to do it. And we're going to do it in a dynamic way. So it doesn't matter how many blank rows or columns or where those rows and columns exist, we'll get rid of all of them with just a few clicks. I want to demonstrate three different ways to solve this problem. Each one of them has their pros and cons, and you can pick the one that you think fits best with your workflow and skills. We begin by selecting the data. If I go up to the name box and choose data, that's the name I've given this data range. By doing so, I can go up to the data ribbon and choose the from table range option. Having brought this into Power Query, I don't want to perform the change type and promote header steps just yet, so I'm going to delete those. So the only step I have is the source step where it originally brings in the data. Next, I want to remove every blank row. Now this is very easy, it's just filtering. Now I wouldn't want to go to column two and delete the nulls from this column because that column is nothing but nulls and I'll remove every row. So you want to do this on a column that's a mixture of data and nulls. So using column one, I'll go to the filter button and just deselect null. Hit OK and I've removed all the blank rows. That's the easy part. The difficult part is the empty columns. Since I never know where or how many empty columns I may have, I might not even have any at all. We want to remove these empty columns dynamically. A very simple way to do this is to go up to the transform ribbon and use a transpose action. This will flip the table. In other words, what were columns are now rows and what were rows are now columns. Now, in pretty much any column, I can perform that same filter out the nulls action. The only thing left to do is go up and hit transpose and flip the table back. And now I'm in a position where I could do something like go to home and use the first row as a header row and set my data types. This, I think, is probably the easiest of the three methods that I'm showing. Our second technique involves the use of the unpivot and pivot tools. As before, I brought the data in using a from table range connector. Next, we'll go up to add column, and we're going to add an index column. This index column starts with zero. Next, with that index column selected, I'm going to right click its header and choose unpivot the other columns. So this now sets up a three column structure. Having done this, all of the blank row and column information has been removed because the unpivot operation does not retain blank columns and rows. What I need to do now is return it to its pivoted state, less the blank rows and columns. So to do this, I'm going to choose the attribute column and then go up to transform and choose pivot column. In the pivot column dialog box, we're going to tell the values column option where the values are and they're in the value column. But because pivoting wants to aggregate, we need to go into the advanced options and tell it to not perform any aggregation because we're just trying to move things. We're not trying to aggregate them. We'll hit OK. And the only thing left to do is remove the index column. And here we have our data less the blank rows and columns. We can now go up to home, use the first row as a header, and set our data types. Our third and final technique for this video is the most technical way to do this. But for those of you who like to get your geek on, this might be the exact way to show off your technical prowess. So we'll begin by pulling in the data. Next, we'll go to any column that's not completely nulls, like column one, again, a mixture of data and nulls, and just filter out the null rows. Next, we'll go up to the FX button and start a new custom formula. I'll expand my formula bar, and I'm going to paste this formula. Let's scroll up and examine what this does. We're using a let function so we can create some temporary objects. Our first temporary object will be called header record. 
And all this does is get the first row from the previous step's output. Well, the previous step is the table, and the first row of that table is the header row. So let header record contain the header row data. Next, we'll create an object called all columns, which just extracts the column names from the previous step. The previous step is the filtered rows table, and we get the column names. So header record will contain things like sales rep, date, year, quarter, month, but all columns will contain column one, column two, column three, column four. Once we've created those two objects, we're going to use a list.select function. This will take that list of column names called all columns, and remember that has columns one, two, three, four, five in it. And we'll use a variable called column name defined as a text data type. This will be used for the record.field function. And what record.field is going to do is iterate through each row of the header record object. Now remember, header record contains sales rep, null, date, year, quarter, month, null, and examine each one of those elements individually. Column name will hold the temporary element being examined. So in the first case, column name will hold sales rep from the header record table and see if it's not equal to a null. And if it's not, it gets selected by the list.select function. Now in the second case, column name holds a null from the header record table. And since null is equal to null, in other words, null not equal to null is a false statement, it will not be retained. When I hit check, the result is a list of the generically named columns that don't have nulls in them. Let's rename this step to get column names. So using the get column names as a reference, we only want to retain columns from the filtered rows step that match retained names from the get column names step. To do this, we'll go up and hit FX. And the function we'll use is the table.selectColumns function. Table.selectColumns says, let's go to the filtered rows step and select every column that's listed in the get column names step. We'll hit check. And now that filtered rows table output becomes this step's input. And this step now lacks any of the empty columns. Let's rename this step to keep column names. After this, we promote the first row to a header row and set our data types. Now, if you're wondering why would I ever do it this way, this seems overly complicated, especially compared to the other methods. By examining just the first row as a header, as long as the official header row of the data has nulls in that row, other rows in that same column could have data and they'd still be targeted for elimination. So where the previous two methods required that the entire column contain nothing but nulls, this method only requires that the header row contain nulls. So yes, it's more technical, but in a situation where you have data in those columns you want to remove, this would successfully discover those columns. Back in Excel, so we can see what the output of those three queries looks like. Our input page has all of the blank rows and columns. Our first method using the double transposition yields a beautiful table with no blank rows or columns. And here are the generalized steps for that operation. Our second method, which utilizes the unpivot pivot operation, also now does not contain the blank rows or columns. And here are the generalized steps for that operation. Finally, our third method, which uses those more sophisticated formulas, also produces a beautiful table with no blank rows or columns. And here are the generalized steps for that. In the advanced editor, this was our double transposition method, method one and we can see the M code fully documented. Here's method two, our unpivot and repivot method. Again, fully documented code. And finally, method number three, which was the more technical method. But again, each step is fully documented. If you've downloaded the solution files, I've included an expanded version of method three. And what this does is if we scroll down, is it takes that let statement and splits it into separate steps. So this way, if you want to see exactly what header record is creating or all columns is creating, we can now go into our applied step list. Here's our filtered rows table where we filtered out the rows, but then we can see header record creates a record of all of the generic column headings and what's in their first row. The all columns step then creates a list that shows all of the generic column names. And then finally, the get column names 
I expand my formula bar, is what iterates through that header record step, comparing the contents of that first extracted row to a null. So if writing embedded let statements is not your cup of tea, here we've just done these steps separately. But going to the last step in the applied step list, the output is the same. So now you know three different ways to remove all of the blank rows and blank columns within a data set. Let me know which way you prefer, and if you have another way of doing it, put that down in the comments. These are the ways I figured it out, but you may have a more creative method and I'd love to see it. Thank you for watching, and remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.